Inden man er på det, så bliver det i en spil af det sang, de er manden. Uh, so St. Gregory uh, Barbariga was born in 1625 in Venice to a noble family. He was given a good education as a child, showed himself to be a very, very capable and brilliant student, and due to his family's um, high status in society, uh, he was given the opportunity as a young man to travel on several uh, high-level diplomatic missions. He was only um, 18 years old at the time, uh, so he soon entered upon a political career but uh, found that it did not, it wasn't very suited to him. So after some number of years, um, actually in his later 20s, um, after again, pursuing this political career, it just didn't, didn't seem to be working out, he didn't like it, Gregory traveled to Rome and he asked a family friend who was a cardinal at the time uh, for advice on whether or not he should just retire into the desert and become a hermit. So maybe uh, some people can relate to that uh, as, as they, things don't seem to be working out, they'd rather just get away from it all. Well, the Cardinal told him, uh, no, not to do that, but instead to become, uh, to be ordained a priest and seek a doctorate in canon law. And I would here uh, perhaps reference the gospel that we'd heard for today, uh, which is the story of our Lord, um, um, or telling the parable of the master who handed out to his servants five talents, two talents, and one talent. And they're expected, when the master returns, to give a return on the talents that they had been given. And uh, I, I don't know if it's, it's not this way in every language, but in, in English, there's that fortunate um, uh, double meaning to the word talent, right? It, in the Old Testament, it meant a sum of money, but in our language, it means an ability, a skill, a capacity. Uh, so when our Lord gives us talents, we need to give it back to him. So perhaps that's what this cardinal recognized, is that, is that you need to develop the talents that you have. So uh, St. Gregory uh, complied with the wishes of this cardinal, and uh, after two years of studying, he, was, he finished his doctorate and was ordained a priest, and at that point, his diplomatic work resumed, uh, because his friend the cardinal was now Pope Alexander VII, who asked him to come and help him administer uh, in the papacy. So uh, St. Gregory did so out of humble obedience and was not the least bit uh, influenced or we could say corrupted by the high honor very common at the time. And uh, in fact, uh, proof uh, or uh, rather display of his sanctity uh, was later that same year when the plague struck Rome, uh, he organized relief efforts for the sick. He established uh, care for them, for those who had let, been left orphans, uh, established um, hospitals, buried the sick, um, uh, and oftentimes with, with his own hands. So this was the, uh, the proof of the charity that was in St. Gregory. So after three years of faithful, faithful service to the Pope, uh, he was appointed a bishop. He, would, uh, he was 32 years old at this time, and it seems like he'd been a priest for three years, and so now he was a bishop. Uh, however, before accepting uh, that, that appointment, St. Gregory offered a mass uh, in petition to God to see whether or not he should accept this or not. So there was that, vi again, that, that proof of that very humble uh, um, desire only to do the will of God. Whatever God wants, that's what I want to do. So we offered this mass uh, for discernment, and, and during the mass he received, uh, um, we could say, a, a interior conviction, okay, you, you, need, you can accept or you should accept this appointment to bishop. Uh, so he did so, and I uh, became a bishop, and two years later he was ordained, or uh, was made a cardinal, and then uh, shortly after that he was made bishop of Padua, that was a larger, larger city. And recall that Padua was a place uh, that gave St. Anthony his name, we heard him just a few days ago, Anthony of Padua. So this is 400 years later, uh, now St. Gregory is bishop of this city, and he was very much aware, very much aware of those saints who had come before him. Uh, in fact, he modeled his behavior as a bishop. St. Gregor modeled his behavior after St. Charles Borromeo, uh, who was a leading figure in the um, uh, Counter-Reformation in establishing the, um, uh, the, the, the decrees from the Council of Trent. Uh, the Council of Trent finished in uh, 1563, and so that would have been just over 100 years after um, Gregory was appointed a bishop, 1664. So St. Gregory was, was modeling his behavior after St. Charles Borromeo. Uh, he was a, a strong supporter of the reforms of Trent 
and he really sought to remedy the abuses that had crept into the clergy uh, up to that time. Uh, and if we could take a historical note at this point, in the 1600s, from, the, from 1560 to, to 1660, uh, was one of the most turbulent times in Europe that, that perhaps it had seen in, in a thousand years. Um, we're, we're very well aware now, if we think of Europe, we think of, okay, you know, Germany and France and Poland and all this, and you've got chancellors and prime ministers and, 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 and congresses and senates and all that. But how did it get to that from the Catholic uh, kingdom that it was? What, what, what happened to the, uh, the Holy Roman emperors? What happened to the, to the, 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 the Habsburgs and the Catholic kings? Uh, how, do we, how do we get from there to here? Uh, the, the decisive point was the religious wars in Europe in the 15 and 1600s after the Protestant Revolution. Uh, and, 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 you know, people, you know, we like to blame Martin Luther and, and Calvin and these, these, these um, um, arch heretics, which they were, but those were the symptoms of a much deeper disease. And that was a corruption of the Catholic clergy. That was the problem. The, 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 the Catholic hierarchy, the Catholic Church was, was in a shambles after you, you had the Great Western Schism, you had the Avignon Papacy. Um, this has been going on for hundreds of years. Uh, and, and by the time that the, the, the Martin Luther came around, uh, Europe, unfortunately, was primed uh, to be fragmented. And so we had, we had the Thirty Years' War from um, 1618 to 1648. And that was, that was just the culmination of a lot of um, political unrest that had been going on in Europe between the Protestant princes, the Catholics, and so on. Um, so that, that was a, something of which St. Gregory would have been very well aware of. Um, I think it's eight million people died in the religious wars in Europe uh, in, that, in that period. And, and not from war, but from starvation, from illness, from disease, from just, just uh, the countryside being ravaged. And so this, this was, um, in fact, the, uh, the, the religious wars were ended by the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648, and, and that ended it um, somewhat. Uh, but this was the mission which St. Gregory went on. His, that first mission he went on, that diplomatic mission when he was 18 years old, it was to the Treaty of Westphalia where this had been um, ended. But the end, the Treaty of Westphalia really brought into uh, Europe that nationalism to where you were not loyal to the Catholic Church, you were loyal to your state, you were loyal to your uh, whatever nationality it was. So that was really the end uh, of, of Catholicism as a unifying factor in Europe. Um, and, uh, and really it continues today. We, the Europe has never recovered, the world has never recovered uh, from that split. And again, it wasn't because of Martin Luther, it wasn't because of the Protestant Revolution, it was because of the Catholic Church's inability, how can I say this? It was because of the Catholic um, um, priests, it was the bishops, it was a hierarchy of the church who uh, would not be faithful to their vows, who would not be faithful to their status as, as, as clerics. Uh, we hear all over and over again, simony and concubinage and uh, political advantage and, and seeking wealth and luxury. This has always been the problem in the church and that has always caused problems in the world, right? It, it is reforming uh, the morality. That's what's going to make the difference. And um, uh, so, so St. Saint, Saint Gregory knew this and he also knew that if you want a reformed clergy, you need a reformed people because the clergy come from the people. And so that, that's where he put his efforts. Uh, so as, as Bishop of Padua, he's, he's um, zealously enforcing the reforms of Trent, which were um, holding ecclesiastics to a standard, and also it was establishing seminaries. We, we, we forget that the seminaries didn't always exist. They're actually a very, in the uh, um, history of the church, seminaries are a recent invention. It was at Trent and St. Charles Borromeo, they said, we need a definite program of instruction for priests. Uh, and so that's what um, um, uh, St. Gregory of Barbarigo, that's what he was, was he was promoting. And he was very effective at it. He was a very good uh, bishop. In fact, in his diocese of Padua, uh, there were 320 parishes and he visited all of them. And so imagine transportation in the, in the 17th century. It wasn't as good as we have now, but he visited all of his parishes. Um, he cared very much for the poor and neglected. He, um, and part of the, visiting the parishes is to check on the life of the clergy. How were you living? How were his parish priests fulfilling their duties? Right? He went and he personally oversaw that. That's good leadership. 
Uh, and also that means that he did not spend as much time with in higher political circles. He wasn't visiting the rich. He wasn't visiting the powerful. He wasn't advancing his political career. He was taking care of his parish priests. He was taking care of his people. And this may have been the reason why uh, over the course of 20 years um, as, as bishop, as cardinal, uh, he was what they would call papabile, able to be made pope. And he was voted for several times. Uh, to become Pope, but he never was able to, and not that he, he didn't even try, but uh, he, he never uh, gained a majority uh, because in, in some people's eyes, he was too religious to be Pope. So he continued uh, he, uh, uh, to be um, just an uh, excellent model of a Catholic bishop. Um, at one point, he, um, he sold his household possessions to raise money for the poor. He exhausted all the money in, in, that he had, and he sold his bed once to give it to a, to gave, raise money for a poor person. So eventually, he uh, he died in the year 1697 uh, on 18 June, uh, which at the age of 72, and he'd been a bishop for 33 years. So that is that's a, that's an example of a good Catholic life. Uh, there's no, no recorded miracles uh, during his life, and after death they exhumed his body. And while um, uh, the, the doctors had said it was in a wondrous condition, it wasn't quite uh, incorruptible. Uh, so he was uh, canonized uh, by John the Twenty Third. Actually, a recent canonization. Uh, John the Twenty Third was from uh, Barbarigo, the town where Saint Gregory was born. So that's, that's why you have him on the, on the calendar. Uh, but, but again, a, a great example of a man who took those talents that God had given him. He had a good education. Uh, he had a brilliant mind. He had a, had a talent for uh, um, uh, political uh, diplomacy. And, and to that, he added uh, the charity of Christ and the love of God. And, and we have an excellent example uh, of what a bishop should be. Uh, quiet life, nothing spectacular, but he did that work of reforming his clergy, of taking care of his people, uh, of running his bishopric, and that's what our current church is founded upon. How are we here? How, how does this chapel exist? How, how are these wonderful nuns here praying for us? And why are you all here? Is because people above us passed on the faith. We were given the faith by our parents, by our priests, by those bishops who came before. And, and that is our connection. And so let us do our part not to let down those who are coming after, right? Not, not to betray the legacy uh, of those people before us, our, our patriarchs, our, our ancestors, uh, but to pass it on, to take the legacy uh, of what St. Gregory did. He worked hard for his people. Uh, let us do the same. Let us pray for our, our, our priests and our bishops um, um, and, and uh, um, uh, just seek how can I show the charity of God uh, to those in my life? How can I pass it on by my teaching, by my example? Uh, let us pray to St. Gregory uh, for that very uh, ability. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.